why it's so good. Oh, yeah. Coming up on Kentucky Afield. It's one of the oldest fishing traditions in the state, and you'll see why after the day we had on Nolin River. Then, it's time to rewrite the history books. There's a new bull atop the Kentucky elk record list. I've seen a couple pictures of this animal, but it doesn't do it justice. And we revisit the successful reintroduction of one of Kentucky's native birds of prey. It's all next on Kentucky Afield. Sweet. Yeah, muskrat. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> what do you know about that, man? That's a good fish, man. Nice male, small mouth. Healthy, pretty color. Cody, here. Find us one more good fish, Cody. As biologists, we, we catch ducks and we place bands on them. And it's just a really excellent place to see cottonmouths. I like it. What do you think? Like bull. That was pretty fun. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Kentucky is very lucky to have some incredible white bass runs. If you've never caught a white bass, they fight hard and they are fun to catch. There he is. There you go. See how strong that, that's the great thing about these fish, they're so strong. There's no second guessing that I just get a bite. <laughs> Here we go. We're just laying right there. <laughs> that's all you gotta do is find them. A pretty good size too. Oh, that's a good fish. So we're here at the Nolan River, close to Bacon Creek. The white bass run is starting to turn on. Well, what you're doing is uh, you'll see you catch the males first. They'll come up. Some of these will be so full of milk, it looks like milk running down them. But now we're beginning to catch the big females. And th these are pretty typical size. We're probably talking, what, 14 inches? Yeah. 13, 14 inches. But man, do they fight, and they're a lot of fun. And when you catch one, a lot of times you're gonna catch a bunch. So let's get after it and see if we can't catch our limit here. What do you think? Okay. I can't think of a, a fish that's much more fun to catch than these. Yeah, and it's a perfect fish to teach a kid how to play a fish. There he is. <laughs> so much fun. They, will, they hook themselves. Yeah, they're pretty voracious and they, they hit really hard. Got a big old fat belly on her. Well, that's three fish and about three casts. That's pretty <laughs> good. That, my friend, was, was a carp. <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't realize that Kentucky's white bass run was historical. Yeah. For me, it just it's, it's when it tells you, all right, spring is here. You come down here and start catching the white bass on, on all the different, you know, Floyd's Fork, Salt River, No Lynn, wherever. Oh, the Dix River uh, here, people just, it used to be a big thing. It's always been well documented. There we go. Yeah. They're still laying there, but they'll take a break every once in a while. I think I'm gonna have to go back and put one of those uh, little jigs you gave me on, because I need some chartreuse. One thing's for sure, they seem to be keying on the chartreuse color. There he is. 
There you go. There we go. Man, they fight so good. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. Hey, good fish. There you go. There we go. Got our honey hole. And once you uh, find a spot, just get after them. That is really cool. Nice job. Here. Right here at dark. Starting to heat up a little bit. Here we go. Oh, what we got here? A shad. It sure is. Look at there, we got a double. Now that's how you're supposed to spend time with your significant other right there. You just come out here and you catch two at a time. And that's a good one. Pretty awesome. So Charlie, you have a canoe, and I know you like to fish that way, but uh, you really enjoy the bank fishing, don't you? Oh yeah, this is what I grew up doing. You know, my people are from down around here. These are kind of like, uh, it's not home waters, but family waters, because this is where you, you know, you had lots of memories with your families. You know, my cousins still come down here. Me and my brother can't get together without talking about a, a Good Friday where we got here. And for about three hours, it was white bass after white bass, every cast. It was the most incredible thing I've ever experienced. The great thing about coming here and fishing is you might feel like you're fishing right exactly where someone else has already been. People will bank fish this, uh, fish it from a boat. You can fish the same water because these fish are constantly moving up. Right. And sometimes it's even good if you, uh, if you catch a couple fish and it slowed down, you got a technique you'd like to do. What you do is you stake out about 100 yards of shoreline. You'll catch two or three in a spot, move down about 30, 40 yards, fish there for 10, 15 minutes, maybe go down one more time and then just go back to the same spot and you'll catch them again. You know, now I've seen you do that at least, at least twice today where you uh, had a spot where you caught some fish and they slowed down on you and you walked away and came right back to them. Yep, and they'll be right back there. How many did we catch in front of that stump? Oh, I'd say 10, eight to 10. And what you do is you catch a couple, walk away. Catch a couple, walk away. Well, I'll tell you what, Charlie, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed doing this with you. Well, I'm glad y'all came down, Chad. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Your little hand-tied jigs are simple but effective. <laughs> <laughs> and I do appreciate it. You know what? Next time we come to the Nolan River, I think we'll try for walleye. What do you think? Well, start coming in January, and once we start catching them, I'll call you. We'd caught about four or five more of these fish would last you till then. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. Take care. The size of the bull elk in the state of Kentucky continue to get bigger and bigger. And every year there's a possibility for a new state record. And it happened again in 2016. Wow, what an impressive animal. Sam Billiter, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I've seen a couple pictures of this animal, but it doesn't do it justice. Standing here and, and seeing the, the mass and the, and the width of this is really impressive. Yeah, it's a gorgeous animal, once in a lifetime animal. Well, congratulations. Uh, this is the current state record elk. Uh, yes, it is. And uh, what, what this thing grows? 408? Uh, around 407, 408 is what it grossed. And then it ended up netting. The first, this is the first Boone and Crockett bull elk taken in the state, right? Uh, first booked Boone and Crockett bull elk uh, in the state of Kentucky. And what was the final score? The final score was 392 and 08. 392. Now, this elk here was taken, obviously, in 2016. Interesting way you got your tag. You actually acquired a tag by uh, working for a group that donated some property for hunting. 
Right. Right. I work for a large coal company in eastern Kentucky. I've worked for them for about 17 to 18 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Fish and Wildlife Department has a program for 5,000 acres of, of donated property that allows uh, the community around you or people in the state or outside the state to have access to, to get drawn for that, to, to open it up for hunting. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we did and, and acquired a couple of tags uh, for doing that. We did uh, 10,000 acres. And you had seen this animal some prior to the season, you knew that this animal was out there, didn't you? I've seen this animal a couple weeks prior uh, mm -hmm. to the hunt. You had some uh, video. I got got some video of it. Uh, this one actually just moved into the property probably a couple, two or three weeks earlier. It is a very impressive animal. And I tell you what, it's, it's companies like yours that allow access on the, really the reason we can place 700 hunters. We, that's what we draw now, 700 hunters in 2017. If we didn't have the property to put some hunters, there would be no reason to draw a hunter if you can't put them somewhere to hunt. Right, well, you gotta have acreage, you know, these are roaming animals and they've gotta have acreage to travel on. Well, and I'll tell you what, for people that wanna come down here and, and, uh, and hunt elk or they wanna take a tour and see elk, reclaimed coal mines are the place to go, aren't they? Oh, it's a beautiful area. <laughs> This joker liked that reclaimed mine land because he was fat and healthy, wasn't he? Oh, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> what an animal. I mean, like I said, a once in a lifetime animal. Well, I appreciate you uh, showing me this animal and walking me through this, uh, this great hunt of yours. Uh, congratulations. Somebody's gonna have to really work to beat this one. Well, I, I'm, I, it'll happen one of these days, <laughs> I'd say. Now let's go talk to a biologist about other opportunities for landowners. So Will, now that was an impressive elk. It was, really was. <laughs> I know, now you, you've been dealing with the elk program for how long? I've been working uh, since 2005 with Elk in Kentucky and uh, full time in the elk program here in the state since 2011. So, is that the biggest one you've seen? That is the biggest elk I've ever <laughs> seen in Kentucky for sure. The, the interesting thing is that uh, Mr. Bilter was able to take that elk using a, a, a program that the Department of Fish and Wildlife offers to really gain access for all hunters. Tell me a little bit about that. One of a really successful program we've had, it's been running for around a decade now as a landowner cooperator program. Mm -hmm. uh, for that program, for each 5,000 acres that a landowner opens up to, to hunt and access, that landowner receives an elk tag. Now, of course, they have to have elk on the property before, before we'll sign that deal. There's another program you guys have too. You also have a program where an individual that may not have 5,000 acres, yeah. that has a good piece of property, they say, wow, we'd like to get an elk hunter on there. Tell me a little bit about that program. What's that called? Yeah, so that's our voucher cooperator program. Most of Kentucky is, is privately owned. It's predominantly privately owned, but not all landowners have 5,000 acres. So the way the voucher cooperator program works is a landowner uh, has to be a minimum of 100 acres. It's a harvest-based point system. The landowner receives points for harvested elk. Once they receive 20 points, that landowner gets elk permit for the following year. Uh, so a cow counts as one point and the bull counts for two points. So the good thing about it, especially for the smaller properties, is that the points roll over from year to year. Uh, okay. So for some of our smaller landowners, it might take them a few years, but we're happy to do that. And we're still taking landowners. Hey, that, that sounds great. Will, I appreciate you letting us know what the department's trying to do to, to gain additional access. I've always enjoyed my time in the field <laughs> with you, and hopefully this year I'll be giving you a call and come back down. I won't be hunting myself, obviously, but <laughs> I will come down here and we'll try to film a gentleman or a lady who gets a tag. So. Yeah, that sounds great. Now let's check in and see who's catching what and where in this week's fishing report. Hi, this is John Williams with the Fishing Report for Southeast Kentucky. At the Lake Cumberland Tailwaters, our krill clerks report good catches of both rainbow trout and brook trout. Garlic flavored power bait seems to be the best bait, also being caught on small spinners. So uh, lots of stalker fish and also some rainbow trout in the slot. Best days seem to be when the flows are pretty low. Elsewhere in the district, the walleye night bite's still going on. Heard some good reports from Del Hollow, uh, also from Laurel and Cumberland on surface baits or subsurface baits. Seems like steep banks or bluff walls are the best areas, uh, mainly uh, main lake areas. And elsewhere in the district, channel catfish, we're stocking Brickyard Ponds in Barberville, that's a Fins Lake. Great bank access all the way around that area, so give that a try. As always, good luck and be safe. This is Rob Rold in the Northwestern Fishery District. Rough River Lake and Nolan River Lake are both temperature-wise in the mid-70s. 
Rains over the Memorial Day weekend have caused both lakes to come up a bit. No land is two and a half feet over Summer Pool. Rough River Lake is six feet over Summer Pool. Bass fishing is actually picking up at both reservoirs. Most of the fish are holding somewhere around 15, 20 foot range. Crappie fishing is finally starting to pick up again using pearl colored 16th ounce jigs and fishing them over brush piles in the 10 to 15 foot depth range, which is where most of the crappie are holding. Peabody Wildlife Management Area, as well as Lake Malone, Bluegill and Red Ear, both doing really well. Free fishing weekend, it is June 2nd and 3rd, so take advantage of it to introduce family or friends to our great sport of fishing. In western Kentucky, down at Kentucky and Barkley Lakes, fishing has really picked up. The water has come back down to summer pool. The water temperature is right around 73 degrees. That have moved back out. They're kind of post-spawn. They're feeding heavily on shad and on ledges secondary points. Your bigger fish are out there in that deeper water. Crappie, they've all kind of moved back out. You still might catch some up shallow, but out deeper on the wedges using minnows would be productive for your white crappie. Bluegill red ear, they've kind of moved back out, but still biting on red worms and crickets, fishing under a bobber. Catfish are starting to pick up, fishing on night crawlers, are going out to the river channels, fishing for blue cats, using some cut bait or some big chunks of night crawler. Well, this is Paul Reister, and I hope you find a good day to go fishing. With a coordinated effort from the Department of Fish and Wildlife and some great corporate partners, the Peregrine Falcon is now thriving in the state of Kentucky. We're at the Trimble County LG&E Bedford Power Plant. We will generate electricity out through a coal-fired power plant. And we're here today to ban the young peregrine falcons that nest in a box here that um, was put up about 10 years ago for them. The peregrine falcon is the largest falcon that occurs in the state of Kentucky, and they're also the fastest land animal. They eat mostly birds and occasionally bats, and they want to catch things in the air on the wing, and that's what makes them so fast. They can um, stoop at over 200 miles per hour to, to catch a bird in flight. Okay. Um, so peregrine falcons were on the endangered species list from 1970 to 1999. We have 12 uh, territorial pairs in Kentucky. And um, the reason that falcons have always been um, something that isn't overly abundant, or at least you don't see them everywhere, is because they nest on really high structures. And so historically they nested on tall cliffs with open rock faces, um, but nowadays they'll nest on cliffs and on man-made structures that are very high, like power stacks. In 1999, I had read an article out west that they were doing the same thing out there. So. I got corporation and they were more than happy to uh, have the nesting box put up. To get to this box, we had to go up 17 floors. And uh, the box sits at about 225 feet out the side of a building that's attached to the power stack. We were careful to be very quiet coming into the nest because we didn't want the parents to know that we were approaching. The box altogether is about um, maybe three feet by a foot and a half deep by two feet high and it's got a, uh, a perch that comes out the front of it that's good for the parents to land on and in order to get the chicks out of the box we, we need the parents to be out of the box and out of the way. And so we waited for um, the parents to leave the box. <laughs> We brought a slide in through um, the front of the box to close it off, and that enables us to go in and grab the chicks out safely. Most of our um, nest boxes that we have up in the state produce four chicks a year. They'll actually grow from an egg all the way to a bird that's in flight. Um, within 40 or 45 days. I think they said that these, uh, these the birds, 
uh, we're only a couple weeks old and they're you know, they're, they're huge. We are getting ready to put some bands on the legs of the chicks and test them for a disease, which is the, um, the whole reason we pulled them out of the box. Today the birds were in their juvenile plumage, which is this white downy plumage. And um, over the next couple of weeks they'll be growing in brown feathers and they'll start to look more like the adults. Really uh, unique creatures to see up close. We cover their face to keep them calm. Each bird gets a uh, unique nine-digit number band on one leg and a color band on the other leg. So when we see them again through a spotting scope later, we can um, look in our database and see where the bird hatched, when it hatched, if it's ever been seen anywhere else, and that's how we keep track of the uh, productivity and survival of these birds. And uh, you know, it's just great that these creatures were, who were once on the brink of extinction are now making a comeback here in Kentucky. We do no longer release um, peregrine falcons in Kentucky, but we still have several birds around that were released in other states or released in our state that are producing chicks um, in Kentucky. And most of the population growth we've seen in recent years was due to the natural production of these nesting pairs. Just a huge growth over the past decade. When you think in 2000, we just had three nesting pairs, so we've actually quadrupled our, our nesting population. The male that we have here is 13 years old. He's our oldest uh, nesting bird that we have, and he's produced 27 young, so we're real proud of him. My favorite part was when, after they did everything, when the birds just looked at the camera, or just like all relaxed, just looking around. Do you want a nice shot of him before we put him back? We couldn't um, provide these uh, falcons a safe nesting location without having the support of the companies that um, will allow us to get a nesting box up for them. So the power companies and public agencies that allow us and, and work with us to provide these safe nesting locations have done us a great service and the recovery of the falcons in our state can really be attributed to them. Oh, I think the employees realize what, what, what it is and how important it is. Oh yeah, the great thing about having these falcons here is that folks really get excited about it. Yeah, one of the employees here, Jim Kraft, shot a video through the um, through the peephole of the young chicks being fed, which was just really neat. I mean, I had the entire office gathered around watching it, just saying, "Oh, you know." <laughs> it's really uh, something special to be here today to witness this in person. Probably the coolest thing I've ever done. It's it's amazing to be able to get up there and have them have them in your hand. You have a new appreciation for them uh, and in the work that uh, the Kentucky Fish and Wildlife Department does along with our folks out here at the plant. Not many people get to see this and I've been able to see it for the last 11 years. And there's the sound of a happy family. <laughs> Now let's see who else is out there having fun as we check out this week's ones that didn't get away. Here's Aiden Brennecke of Fern Creek with a nice bluegill taken from his grandfather's pond in Breckenridge County. Congratulations! Here we have a nice deer taken by William McCoy, a 10-pointer that was harvested by a bow in LaRue County. Nice job! Jacob Spanier took this nice deer while hunting with his dad in Oldham County. Congratulations! Here we have Hunter Durham with his first deer ever taken in Hardin County. Nice job. Here we have Tyler Sims with his first deer, a nice doe that was taken in LaRue County. Congratulations. Here we have Will Shannon who said that a little bit of scouting really paid off here with his nice doe. Nice job. Now check out this bass by Garrett Phelps. He caught this in an Ohio County farm pond. Garrett, you're going to have to show me your fishing holes. Nice fish. Now here's an impressive buck taken by Leighton Phillips. He's from Butler County, but this buck was taken in Ohio County. Nice job. Here we have Kentucky Field fan Brandon Cobble of Graves County with his two deer taken during the modern firearm. Nice job. Here we have two pictures of Wesley Gill holding largemouth bass. The first one was caught when he was five, and the stringer bass was caught this past year when he was eight in Lincoln County. Nice job. Max Nezzi of Campbell County, Kentucky shows us this nice catch that he had, a large catfish caught in a private pond. Congratulations. Here's Will Evans of Anderson County with an impressive turkey taken with a 20 gauge shotgun. Congratulations. 
Landon Pierce knows where to catch the bass on Green River Lake as he holds up this nice largemouth bass. Congratulations. Here we have David Hunt with a nice three pound largemouth bass. Said he and his wife really enjoy Kentucky Field. Nice job. Hey, if you're looking for a place to go fishing this summer, check out our website at fw.ky.gov and search for our Fins Lake. They're constantly being stocked. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Till next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.